So there seems to be a small problem with the latest firmware on the JK Inverter BMS, which causes your inverter to force charge your battery, even if you have set it not to charge the battery from the grid or the utility. It just ignores this and it charges anyway. And on top of this, once the battery is fully charged to 100% state of charge, it doesn't even allow you to use power from the battery. But luckily, there is a workaround which only takes about 30 seconds to fix. So in a previous video, I showed you how to connect the JK Inverter BMS to a SunSync inverter using CAN communication. And we used the CAN protocol 001 DAE because, well, these are basically DAE inverters and everything seemed to work pretty well. And this was running firmware version 15.11. But after a while, I noticed a small issue when two batteries were connected in parallel to the inverter and the state of charge wasn't being reported accurately. It almost seemed like the state of charge data from both of the the batteries or the, the BMSs wasn't being aggregated correctly and then reported to the inverter. But this seems to have been fixed in a later firmware update. So this is hardware version 15 of the JK inverter BMS, which is also running firmware version 15.17. And it's connected using CAN communication to a SunSync inverter. And the CAN communication protocol is 001 DAE low voltage hybrid inverter. And that's been set in the JK BMS app. So what is happening is if your inverter is set to only charge your batteries using solar power uh, and not use the grid or utility power at all, or possibly if it's set to charge the batteries from the grid only during specific times, the BMS seems to be requesting a forced charge from the inverter, which results in the inverter just completely ignoring this and immediately using grid power to charge the battery. Now, luckily the inverter doesn't seem to ignore the charge current limits. It only ignores the charge source and the time settings. This wasn't an issue with firmware 15.11, but after upgrading to 15.17, this seems to be happening. So let me show you what's happening and how we can get around it. Now you'll notice that zero solar power is coming in and pretty much zero grid power is being used. All of the power is being supplied by the battery and that is just under 1000 watts. Now the current draw from the BMS may look a little bit low at around 9 amps or 475 watts and that's because there are two batteries in parallel so each battery is supplying around 475 watts for a total of about 950 watts. So if I go to the battery setup page and then select the battery charge tab you'll notice that the grid charge has been disabled and that the charge current will be limited to 40 amps in the event that the battery is allowed to charge using grid power. We can also check the system mode page and see that none of the grid charge boxes are checked. So the battery shouldn't charge from the grid at all. We can also head over to the battery communication page and see that the battery is currently discharging at 17 amps. In the settings on the master BMS, if I set the CAN protocol to 001 DAE low voltage hybrid inverter, as soon as I save the setting, the request force charge command pops up on the inverter and now watch the battery current as it goes from discharging at 17 amps to charging at 36 amps. Now remember, there is no solar power coming in and charging from the grid is disabled. But yet, if we go back to the power flow screen, we can see that three kilowatts is being drawn from the grid, around one kilowatt is going into the house, and around two kilowatts is charging the battery. So if I leave this alone, the battery will charge to 100% state of charge, and it will stay right there and not be allowed to discharge. Even though I've got it set in the system mode time of use settings that the battery is allowed to discharge down to 80%. So this was earlier when the batteries were at 100% state of charge and allowed to bulk charge for one hour and then change over to the float charge voltage. And in the master BMS, the day can protocol is still selected and the force charge command is still being shown. Now, even though the battery is at 100%, 750 watts is still being drawn from the grid and nothing from the battery. And I'm not 100% sure, but I think this is because the BMS is not releasing this force charge request or command. Now, at least we are lucky enough, if the grid power does end up going down, even with this force charge request still active, the inverter doesn't shut down because it does allow the battery to discharge. Let me show you. So yeah, I have grid power covering the full load and no solar power coming in and the force charge is still restricting discharge from the battery. And I'll go ahead and turn off the AC breaker for the grid. Three, two, one. 
of. And you can see the battery takes up the full load. So thankfully, at least this still works. Now, as much as I've looked around in the BMS or the inverter settings, I can't seem to find any way to set or adjust or even just to view these force charge parameters. So if you guys know any different, please let us know in the comments. So clearly there is a bit of a bug in the system. So how do we fix it? Well, thanks very much to George GPR from Greece for being the first person to leave a comment in one of the previous videos where he said, all that we need to do is set the CAN communication protocol in the BMS to 002 day low voltage version 1.2 and the force charge request should disappear and everything should work perfectly well. So let's go and set that and see what happens. So here the battery is at 92% state of charge and it's being charged at around 2 kilowatts or 36 amps total or 18 amps per battery and all the power is coming from the grid. So I'll go ahead and set the pylon can protocol and as soon as the setting is saved the request force charge command disappears and the battery is allowed to discharge. And heading back over to the power flow screen, you'll also notice that the full load is now being covered by the battery and nothing is being drawn from the grid. And here's another example where the battery is at 100% state of charge and has had a chance to bulk charge and is currently floating. And all the power is being drawn from the grid because the request force charge is still active. But as soon as that pylon can protocol is selected, the command disappears and the battery is allowed to discharge and cover the full load once again. So thanks very much, George, and the other few people that also mentioned this. I'm sure it's going to go a long way to helping many other people. By the way, if you guys are finding the video useful and you do like it, please give it a thumbs up. And also, if you don't mind, share it with maybe just one other person that you think might find it interesting. Now, I couldn't find much documentation on this request force charge function, at least nothing from JK that I'm aware of, but I was able to find this. So if I remember correctly, I was just searching on Google and this came up, I think it was on the Solar MD website um, about battery protection and about this force charge command stuff. And it says for protection, the battery will send the inverter one or more of the following status commands. So there's a charge enable and a discharge enable. You guys can read those. But here's the thing, there is a request force charge one, which is when the battery's discharge control drops below 30%, it will send this command to the inverter, forcing it to charge the battery. And it says if no charge source like grid or PV is available, the inverter will go into error mode F56 DC volt low fault and will stop supplying the load until another source of energy is available. There's also another request force charge, which is request force charge two. And it says here, when the battery's discharge control drops below 15%, it will send this command to the inverter, forcing it to charge the battery. And it's basically the same thing. So I found that on the uh, Solar MD website. I can't remember. I think it was about something about their batteries or something. And in this next table, the one that you're looking at now, I found this on, I think I was searching and it was a PDF document. So this is like an extract of a SunSync battery document, as far as I can remember, uh, which told you about uh, or explained the CAN protocols and all the bits of information that you get. And you can see it says here, table five, um, there's also a charge enable and a discharge enable under bit seven and bit six, but then have a look at bit five and bit four. It says request force charge one and request force charge two. So for bit five, um, it reads there, bit five is designed for the inverter to allow the battery to shut down and be able to wake the battery up to charge it. Uh, which, okay, that's what that says, but I think this is the one that we are experiencing. But four is designed if the inverter does not want the battery to shut down, and in this case, the inverter itself should set the threshold of state of charge, and after force charge, only when the battery state of charge is higher than this threshold, then the inverter will allow discharge to avoid force charge and discharge status changing frequently. So there we go, it looks like this is a protective function to charge a battery with a low state of charge. Basically, it seems like a last ditch effort to charge the battery from whatever power source is available to prevent the battery from disconnecting or from maybe becoming damaged. Now this possibly does make sense. For example, if the battery were to run down to maybe a 20% state of charge and for whatever reason, maybe it dropped lower than 20%, maybe down to 10 or 5%, 
to possibly prevent the battery from disconnecting and the inverter shutting down or, or again to prevent battery damage. Uh, if there is any power available to charge the battery, go ahead and ignore, say, the charge from solar only setting and then use that power available to bump the battery state of charge back up to maybe 20 or 30 percent. So what do you guys think? Please let us know in the comments. Well, I think this might be quite nice to be able to set these parameters in the BMS. Something like a settable state of charge for when this request force charge feature is activated and deactivated. Maybe even with some time settings sort of included with that, but you know, let's not push our luck. And I'm sure as time goes by, there will be later versions of the Fermi released and hopefully JK can fix this bug with a day he can protocol. But if you are still running version 15.17, I think this is something to be aware of. And if you guys are interested in learning more about uh, using a JK inverter BMS with a SunSync or a day inverter, go watch this video right here. Well, thank you very much for watching and you'll see me in the next one. Cheers.